Take a good look around you. Recognize a vibrant pull of hairstyles. Take your time. Beautiful, isn't it? And I don't mean the hair necessarily. I'm talking about the liberty we all have. The simple pleasure of choosing how your hair will look like today. With each passing year, I've gone to love and appreciate all the different ways I can style my hair, or the beauty and liberty of it. And I can't imagine a life where a million and one restrictions existed on how I could express myself, my art, and my culture through my hair. How constricted I would feel. But then, when I thought of my cousin's school, my next door neighbor's school, schools where boys must shave off their locks, and schools who require girls to cut or palm their hair, I kept asking the question, why? Why does Afro hair bother these schools so much that they'll choose to deny a child the right to learn rather than proceed with the day because, again, kinks and curls in hair were natural anyway? Why don't they see the beauty of the big voluminous froze or the beauty of the imperfect symmetry of those long two-stranded twists or even the beauty of the perfect coiling that yields such beautiful locks? Why? It has to be deeper than those shallow arguments they defend, right? Right. Puffy eyes, red eyes, sad eyes. Those were the eyes I remember looking into and thinking, how dare they steal this part of her? I had just learned that my friend had palmed her hair that morning against her will because her school required her to. That part of her identity was stolen away from her. Straight hair policies for what, I ask you? These policies simply push the agenda of Eurocentric beauty ideals. Nothing more, nothing less. Where curly-haired girls must become straight-haired girls through a process that damages their hair. Where girls must chemically modify their innate hair texture to resemble Western-type hair. And then, these are schools who say no to everything but short hair. They claim that by dictating sh all students have short hair, they are creating an environment that fosters equality for all students. And in this equality argument, it's hinted that the luxury of straight hair is not at everyone's disposal. Thus, to hinder arguments relating to class status, short hair must be spotted on each and every student. First, the assumption that kinky hair is worth feeling disadvantaged, inferior, or insecure about had me on edge. Because this assumption is evidently influenced by the misconstrued narrative of black hair the Christian missionaries had when they began colonial education in Kenya. They demanded that girls who attended their schools cut their hair to the scalp. Why, you may ask? Because African hair was unsightly. In the present day, however, schools forget that times have evolved. There's no longer a biased man standing at the front gates of education who picks and who chooses, who gains to our knowledge by the straightness or shortness of strands that grow from their head. But if some schools continue to put these policies in place, it would almost be accurate for me to state that nuances of this former demeaning perspective of African hair are still intricately webbed into the no hair, short hair, or straight hair policies. Now, imagine your parent. How do you explain to Kungu, your six-year-old, that today he was sent home from school because of his locks? I mean, unaware of all these stereotypes surrounding people who have locks, how could he possibly understand? My question to the schools who continue to ban locks is, how do locks compromise someone's intellectual ability, productivity, or even personality? And then, Let's not forget the schools who ban protective styles, an utter paradox in itself. 
because our kind of hair texture is the one in direst need of protecting. Fellow Kenyans, why is our country lagging behind? The natural hair movement took the world by storm. Even this year, New York banned race-based hair discrimination in July. I mean, can we please catch on? So moving forward, how does liberalizing hairstyles help shape our future? Well, for starters, children of all ages will finally be able to go to school spotting different hairstyles. I mean, it can't be that hard. Second, I think there's just something so magical about hair that makes you feel beautiful, empowered, and confident. Men and women alike. An environment that encourages girls and boys to cultivate hair love would read any prior insecurities regarding their hair. Also, a stronger sense of community would be built among our students because it's a subliminal way to communicate to each one that they are accepted and loved in their school environment. And finally, to the schools who embrace butt-length braids, bouncy twistings, bantu knots, locks, afros, cornrows, beaded hair, wrapped hair, covered hair, colored hair, and beaded hair like myself, thank you. And to those that don't, I have a dream that one day forfeiting a child's education on the premise of their hair won't even be an option. A dream where the term Nulanzuri will only mean hair that's nourished, healthy, but most importantly, crowned in culture. Thank you. Yeah.